I believe, I believe I'm, on, I'm the on the air. I hope I'm, I'm on, on the air. On the air. This is this Ron Tyler with the Emergency, emergency Management, management Associates, Associates coming, coming to you from, from the area, area command, command 392, 392 miles, miles west, west of Kitty Hawk Beach, Beach, North Carolina. North Carolina. I, I don't know whether, know whether we are on the air, the air or not, or not right, right now. I hope, I hope we are, we are on, on the air. The air. I'm, just I'm just checking, checking our, our monitor, monitor here. here. I hope we're on the air anyway. Can, can everyone, everyone can, can someone, someone give me a five, five by five, 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 five to let us know, know that, that our, our audio is all right? We have we have information that says we have an echo. Did I calm down that echo now? Did I calm down the echo? That's what I need to know now. Have we calmed down the echo? The echo's still going on. How about now? Do we have an echo? Okay, now we're getting five by five. That's great. You're on the air. Audio is good. Joe says, Joe Bruno, thank you so much for that. I want to thank everybody here as well. Folks, I want to give you information tonight that you need to know what's going on. Last night we talked about what is going on in Iran. I want to make it abundantly clear what is happening. Okay? I want to make it abundantly clear. Okay? We talked to you about terrorist attacks that have been going on. I want to make it clear what is happening now in Israel. We probably, have, you all have probably seen a lot of stuff that's going on over YouTube and the other uh, networks, um, whether it's mainstream networks or Rumble or wherever it's coming from. I waited to come on the air tonight because I have information from sources. I have information from the media. I have the information from mainstream, so some mainstream sources, not the media, and I have people that have given me information that I can pass on to you. Some of these people are military in nature. First, on Saturday evening in Israel, Iran launched drones toward Israel in a retaliatory attack just like they did last night. In a statement, Israeli Defense Forces said that Iran launched unmanned aerial vehicles from within its territory towards Israel. The IDF is on high alert and is constantly monitoring the operational situation. The IDF Aerial Defense Array, meaning the Iron Dome, is on high alert along with IAF fighter jets and Israeli naval vessels. They're on a defense mission in Israeli airspace. The IDF is monitoring all targets. Israeli officials said it could be many hours before the drones reached Israeli airspace, and that's exactly what they've done. Iran has been attacking attacking. Israel for quite some time now. Alerts started to sound across Israel at close to 2 a.m. Israeli time, local time in Israel. Alarms went off, went off in southern Israel by the Dead Sea in Jerusalem and the Shamron area. U.S. forces in the re region has all, have also shot down some of the Iranian launch drones. So the United States Navy and the Air Force are actively participating in shooting down Israel, or, um, Iranian drones. Iran has begun an airborne attack against Israel, according to a National Security Council spokesman, Adrian Watson. She said, Iran has begun an airborne attack against Israel. Iran's attack comes in retaliation for an April 1st Israeli strike 
on an Iranian consulate in Damascus, Syria, which killed seven members of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Some of those individuals that were killed in the Islamic um, Revolutionary Guard Corps were officers. President Biden has returned to the White House today in preparation for an imminent attack. President Biden has been regularly updated on the situation by his National Security Advisor staff. And they are meeting with him this afternoon and this evening at the White House. His team is in constant communication with Israeli officials as well as other partners and allies. This attack is likely to unfold over a number of hours. President Biden had been very clear, quote, he said this last night and again today, our support for Israel's security is launched and is ironclad. Israel and their support, their defense against these threats from Iran is real. Israel and support, their defense against these threats from Iran. That is the official statement. The U.S. is on standby for further action by Iran and from within the region via its, its proxies, according to the U.S. official today. The proxies, as you have probably seen over the last six to eight months, have been the Houthi rebels in, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the, the country, in the southernmost eastern part of um, the Middle East, Yemen. I'm sorry, Yemen. The Houthi attackers over in Yemen that are backed by Iran. And the Hamas terrorists, the Hezbollah terrorists. Okay? Iran has strongly condemned the Israeli attack in defending itself over in the Gaza Strip. Iran didn't like Israel attacking in retaliation to Hamas and Hezbollah forces that came over the Israeli border from the Gaza Strip in hang gliders and in through tunnels underneath their fence. Hamas and Hezbollah did that. Iran didn't like re retaliation from Israel. So that was the start of this whole thing. According to the U U.S. officials, the U.S. is positioned to be able to shoot down incoming drones from Iran via assets in Iraq and Syria. Iraq and Syria. U.S. forces are standing by in Iraq and Syria. Now, you also need to know that there are forces in Iraq that are not friendly forces. The U.S. also has fighter jets that are now on standby. The U.S. assets who are in addition to Navy destroyer USS Kearney staying in the central Mediterranean to provide additional protection if needed instead of heading west. And the destroyer U.S. Arleigh Burke is remaining in the eastern Mediterranean where it has been for a while. The U.S. preference is for the Israeli government to wait and assess the impact of the Iranian reprisal before responding to it. That's the preference. The preference is for a cal what the U.S. deems a calibrated response. The expectation is that the Israelis will calibrate what it sees that Iran is doing. They will calibrate based on whether it successfully intercepted Iranian incoming scuds and whether or not there are any casualties. In a statement, in this statement, they acknowledged the attack saying Iran had launched a punitive strike against the occupied territories. This operation involved the use of both missiles and drones. Iran's UN mission said that the attack was in response to the strike in Israel and that the matter can be deemed concluded. 
However, should the Israeli regime make another mistake, Iran's response will be considerably more severe. That is the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Force. The mission added, it is a conflict between Iran and rogue Israeli re regime, from which the U.S. must stay away. Iran is telling us to stay away. Now, I am being buffered here. We're being heavily buffered here, and we, you are probably also being buffered too. And we are getting buffered hard. Okay, I'm going to continue talking. Demon Catman says, we are five by five there in England. So I'm going to continue talking here and giving you my report that I have for all of you. Again, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Force has said that the war is between Iran and the rogue Israeli regime, from which the United States must stay away. That is the official statement from Iran. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Netanyahu addressed Israeli citizens in a video address earlier this evening saying, in recent years and even more so in recent weeks, Israel has been preparing for the possibility of a direct attack from Iran. Our defense systems are deployed and we are prepared for any scenario, both in defense and attack. The state of Israel is strong. Israeli defense force is strong. The public is strong. An official in the region said that anything that passes over Jordanian territory is a problem and will be intercepted. A British official also confirmed that the British have scrambled jets from Cyprus in an attempt of an anticipation of the attack. That was earlier today. The Israeli front, Home Front Command issued guidelines limiting gathering to a maximum of 1,000 people. All schools were closed through at least Monday. People were advised to remain near safe rooms and shelters. The work week in Israel runs from Sunday through Thursday. Yesterday, Biden urged Iran not to move forward, saying his message to Tehran was, don't. Earlier in the week, the United States sent a senior general to Israel to coordinate, to coordinate the close American ally force on any response it might make to an Iranian attack. British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak issued a statement condemning Iran's drone attack in the strongest terms. Joseph Burrell, a European Union Foreign Affairs Chief, said earlier today that the European Union European Union strongly condemns the unacceptable Iranian attack against Israel and calling it an unprecedented escalation and a grave threat to regional security. Tensions in this region, you might all be aware of, tensions in the region have continued to rise in recent years and also recently since last November. Earlier today, Commandos from the Special Forces Unit of Iran's Revolutionary Paramilitary Guard seized an Israeli affected or affiliated, they seized an Israeli affiliated container ship near the Strait of Hormuz. The U.S. government called on Iran to release the vessel 
and its international crew immediately. Seizing a civilian vessel without provocation is a blatant violation of international law. That is according to a national security official spokesman, Adrian Watson. Quote, it must be condemned unequivocally, and we will work with our partners to hold Iran to account for its actions. Meaning, the United States is aware of it, and we are putting Iran on notice. All United States embassies in the Middle East were put on high alert and required to hold emergency action committee meetings. Diplomats in Lebanon and Israel were specifically told not to travel to certain areas within those countries. Earlier in the day, Lebanon launched missiles toward northern Israel. Lebanon and Iran are unequivocally together on the attack with Israel. State media reported Jordan has closed its airspace in light of the escalating risks in the region. They have also declared a state of emergency in the region. Israel announced that they would close their airspace from 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. local time. Two United States officials have said that a major Iranian attack against Israel was expected imminently, possibly to include more than 100 drones and dozens of missiles aimed at military targets inside the country. Sources said the retaliation could include attacks carried out by both Iranian forces and proxy groups around the region that it had been funneling additional arms to for weeks. Okay. Iran had been funneling arms and munitions to various proxy groups to assist in the Iranian attack. Okay? They've already been doing that for months now. They've been doing it for months. The United States Thursday, day before yesterday, warned Americans in Israel not to travel outside major cities which are better protected from incoming rocket fire by the country's Iron Dome missile system. Defense Minister Yoav Gallant and Foreign Minister Israel Kotz on Wednesday both threatened that if Iran launches an attack from its own soil, then Israel would strike back inside Iran, amid increasingly belligerent rhetoric between the two countries. The warnings came after Iran's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, said Israel must be punished and it should be for allegedly attacking an Iranian consular building in Syria's Damascus, killing two generals among several other Islamic Re Revolutionary Guard officers. The Iranian Revolutionary Guard is a U.S. designated terrorist organization. Let me repeat that. The Iranian Revolutionary Guard is a U.S. designated terrorist organization. Have I made that abundantly clear? What Iran has been doing has been a terrorist act. The Ayatollah Khomeini or Khomeini said that in bombing an em embassy site, Israel attacked their territory. And we in the United States say the same thing. If someone attacks our embassy, it is as if whoever attacked, attacked our own country. Defense Minister Yoav Gallant and Foreign Minister Israel Kotz both threatened if Iran launches the attack from its own soil, then Israel would launch back into the inside of Iran. They're holding Iran to blame. Iran was backing not just the Houthis in Yemen, 
but they have been back in Hamas and Hezbollah. Okay? This is Iran's fault. This is Iran's fault. Plain and simple. However, the Ayatollah Khomeini said that in bombing an embassy site, they attacked Iran. Speaking to troops at an Iron Dome air defense system battery in northern Israel, Mr. Glant said any attack on the country would face a strong defense before a powerful response in its territory. In this war, we are being attacked from more than one front. Israel is being attacked from more than just one front. Any enemy that tries to attack Israel will first be met with a strong defense. Defense Minister Yoav Gallant and Foreign Minister Israel Kotz said that if threatened, they would launch an attack on Iran. They would do it. Now, Israel means business. We've seen Israel stick up for itself in the past. And now, the United States is there to back them up. And so is Britain. We have ships, we have Air Force personnel within striking distance. Britain coming from Cyprus. The United States coming from ships and other people that are loyal to the United States. Now Gallant from Israel said, we know how to react very quickly with decisive offensive action against a territory of whoever attacks our territory, no matter where it is in the entire Middle East. We have this ability that a potential Israeli response would be very effective and very powerful. One of the things we excel at over at the year, one of the things that they excel at over the years is that the enemy never knows what surprises they are preparing for. They've been threatened. The attack from Iran is on. It's ongoing. Israel already said it. Their enemies have no clue what surprises are in for them. They don't. They have no clue. A powerful response in Iran. In this war we are being attacked from more than one front, from different directions. Any enemy that attacks us will first all be met with a strong defense. We know how to react very quickly with decisive offensive action against a territory of whoever attacks our territory. He meant business. He says we have the ability to be very, very effective and very powerful. If Iran attacks from its territory, Israel will react and attack in Iran. Then, he, rep he repeated the very same warning in a Persian language post and attacked Ayatollah Khomeini in an official X account, formerly Twitter. Iran, which says it seeks to destroy the Jewish state, and I want to, to stop right now and say Iran has been saying this for a very, very long time. Iran has threatened the West. Iran has threatened Israel. This has been the case since the early 70s that I remember. Iran, which says it seeks to destroy the Jewish state, 
has developed rockets with a range that can hit anywhere in Israel and has boasted of its ability to strike. In a major escalation of Israel's war with regional adversaries, suspected Israeli warplanes bombed a, billi- a building in the Syrian capital on April 1st. In a strike that Iran said killed seven Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps military advisors at a consulate site, some of whom were Iran's top commanders in Syria. Mohammad Rezi Kahidi and Khomeini said the strike which leveled a five-story building adjacent to the Iranian embassy in Syria had run roughshod over international agreements providing for the inviolability providing for the inviolability of diplomatic premises. In other words, no one is supposed to deal with any diplomatic premise. Defense Minister Gallant and Foreign Minister Israel Kotz both threaten that if Iran launches an attack, they will respond. They will respond. Now, I want to make it very clear. The United States military, the United States Navy and Air Force are on the ball. We are in the region. We, the United States military, has already shot down dozens of Iranian drones that have been hell-bent on going after Israel. So we're involved. We're there. Okay? We are there. Now, does anybody have any questions? I want to make sure that everyone is well aware of where we're coming from. Each and every one of us needs to be aware of everything going on around us. We talked about this last night. Okay? Danny Huddleston here in the chat said the end Israel will destroy the big dam on the Nile River and take its land back, and that's biblical. It is. That is absolutely biblical. Lama's Light said, Iran, you just try. You will find out, and you will face the wrath of Almighty God. Agreed. Lamas of Life says, Ron, I can't work up any patriotism. I already have. I already have. Does anybody have any questions for me? I've been following this literally all day long. I'm on top of it. I'm very much on top of it. The only reason that Iran didn't attack until yesterday is that the Islamic people were celebrating Ramadan, the holy month of Ramadan. They held off until the Ramadan, (coughs) excuse me, they held off until the Ramadan was over. Then they came out Israel. And they knew that the United States was backing Israel. And our allies are also backing Israel. Whatever happens is Iran's fault. Because they started it in the very beginning. Long before Israel went after the consulate, the Iranian consulate in Syria. Long beyond that. Long beyond that. Now, the Iranian state television broadcast Ayatollah Khomeini's response live, but they did not elaborate how Iran would retaliate. On Tuesday this week, London-based LF News cited an anonymous Western security official as saying that 
Israel have been conducting air force drills in recent days that include preparing to target Iranian nuclear facilities and other key infrastructures should the Islamic Republic retaliate for the Damascus strike by attacking from its own territory. Unnamed U.S. intelligence sources said that Iran is unlikely to attack Israel directly out of fear of American and Israeli reprisals and will instead urge its various proxies in the region to launch attacks on its behalf in the coming days. That has not been the case. Israel has not used any proxies whatsoever. They have been defending themselves and it will soon become offensive. An Iranian diplomatic source on Wednesday said this source is affiliated with Hezbollah. They said that Iran has proposed to the United States that it will refrain from hitting back at Israel for the time being. If there is a ceasefire in Gaza and Israel does not fall through on its promised offensive against the southern Gaza city of Rafah. But instead, Iran decided to forego that proposal that they gave the United States and attack Israel anyway. Diane Kelman is asking, are there any nuclear plants in Israel? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. That's a good question. That's a great question. Lama's Light said there is a is there a lot of rhetoric going on? The question, yes, there is. Everyone is using rhetoric right now. Everyone is using rhetoric. The United States, Israel, Britain, NATO, everybody. We are standing up for what is ours. We are standing up for Israel, who has been one of our greatest allies over the last half century. Ronald Reagan first said, no one, no one will not defend Israel. Everyone will. President Trump moved the capital to Jerusalem. There was a reason. There was a reason. It's biblical. Wilson is asking if we are in DEFCON 2. Wilson, only the military know what DEFCON level we're at. Only the military and select other officials know what DEFCON level we are at. Anyone that says that we are DEFCON 2 does not know what they're talking about. I want to make that statement right now. No one, no one knows what DEFCON level we're at. That is classified information. In fact, it's not just classified, it is top secret information. If we left DEFCON, if we had been at DEFCON 2 and something happened here on our soil, it would automatically go to DEFCON 1. Okay? But I'm saying to you right now, no one knows what DEFCON level is. No one. Only the military know. Okay? Please, please do not listen to those people that are saying we are DEFCON 2. They do not know what they're talking about. I have worked around the military long enough. One, to understand what they're doing, and two, to understand they're not just going to say we are DEFCON 2. It's not going to happen. It's not going to come out of Washington. It's not going to come out of the 
mainstream media. And anyone else that's saying that has no clue. Okay? Oh yes, greetings and prayers for peace around the world. Sally Bob Ross says, so if we help Israel respond and our southern border has been wide open for three years, do you foresee any jihad type attacks in the U.S. retaliation? Yes. Yes. I personally have seen video of military aged men coming across our southern border in military like uniforms and they're carrying weapons. Not just sidearms. I'm talking AK-47 type weapons. I've seen it. Some of you may also have seen it. This is real. There are sl terrorist sleeper cells in the United States. There were terrorist sleeper cells before this bozo opened up the borders. Before the bozo in chief in in uh, Washington opened up the all the borders to anybody that wants to come in. You can only imagine what's going on now. You can only imagine what's happening now. Those sleeper cells are getting refresher men. They are getting refreshed men ready to go to war against us. That is why I have been very strongly saying that you and I and everybody else around us, we must be ready and we must be ready to move now. When things get bad, and you're going to see it, each and every one of us are going to see it. When things get bad, you're going to see it and be aware of what's happening. And each and every one of us, as I said last night, we must be ready to defend ourselves, our families, us as individuals and our families. We must be able to and be ready to defend ourselves because nobody else is going to do it. Lana's life says, look at what other violence we have already in our country. I agree. I agree. Look what's happening in New York. Look what's happening in Chicago. These terrorists that Biden has invited into our country, and in fact, he has continued to put illegal aliens on planes and ship them into New York. New York is having to lay down all kinds of money to support Biden's influx of aliens into this country. Chicago's done the same thing. The aliens in New York have also moved from New York to other cities because they felt that the New York, author New York authorities weren't giving them what they were promised. And they moved on. They moved on to all kinds of other cities and towns throughout the United States. You better beware of what's going on around you. In the past months and years, we talked about situational awareness. Now more than ever, we must be looking around us at all times. We must be aware of what's happening. If we're not, we're going to lose our own lives. Lama's life says she's in a small town in Western North Carolina. She's never seen so many Hispanic looking people as I do now. I've seen the same thing here where I live. And it's not just Hispanic people. Everyone needs to know what's going on around them. Okay? Lama's Light says this is a time to not be led by our heart or emotions. We must not just fear. 
If we lead our life with fear, we're screwed. We're totally done with. We must receive personal revelation from God on how we're going to act in our own lives and what we're going to do to protect ourselves, what we're going to do to prepare. Iran back groups have entered the fray across every region of the world, especially since they have the ongoing war with Israel and the Hamas-led terror group in the Gaza Strip. Like I said early, early on, Iran has backed and supplied Hamas and Hezbollah. Iran had peppered Israel early on. They had been goading and teasing Israel. Go ahead, strike us. Israel has. The Iran-backed Hamas and Hezbollah terrorists have included rocket fire from Lebanon by the Hezbollah terror group. War erupted on October 7th when Hamas led a devastating cross-border attack on Israel from Gaza that killed 1,200 people amid other atrocities as well, and kidnapped Israelis and other people, including Americans, and took them to Gaza. Some of those kidnapped victims have been killed. Others may still be alive, but we don't know anything about them, or very little. After Israel was attacked from Gaza, Israel responded with a military campaign to destroy Hamas and free the 253 hostages who were abducted during the attack and taken to Gaza. Negotiations between via uh, mediators for at least a temporary ceasefire in Gaza that would include the release of hostages has so far not yielded a deal. So Iran that has been back in Hezbollah and Hamas has not even given up a deal. It's not that Israel doesn't want a ceasefire. Iran didn't want a ceasefire because they knew they were preparing to attack Israel. A diplomatic source told Allah Akbar that Iran and the U.S. had exchanged messages following the Damascus strike via Oman, which for years has acted as a go-between between between Iran and the United States. According to that source, Iran assessed that Israel was trying to extract itself from complications in the Gaza campaign by trying to pull the U.S. into a direct conflict with Tehran. Again, this is what Iran was thinking. That Israel would pull the United States into it. Not necessarily so, but the United States has also benefited and they have also been defending and protecting Israel. Iran asked the United States not to go there. And if the U.S. responded in any way, then what Iran would have them do, that Iran would retaliate. If Iran attacked Israel, which is what it has done, Iran didn't want the U.S. to get involved. The United States, on the other hand, told Tehran to not exact its revenge by attacking U.S. targets in the region. Iran is seeking conditions aimed at limiting the expanse of the scope of war in the region and to keep the United States out of the conflict because Iran knows that Israel is already very strong. That is why today that Iran attacked 
the bases in Israel. The United States forces have been deflecting the drones. Now the United States is there, and Iran knows it. Together with the strong Israeli force that Iran knows it has, and the United States military already geared up and ready, Iran knows that things can be very bad. Very bad. So far, even the Iranian proposals have been shook, everybody shaking their heads at Iran. Because they know that Iran wants to do whatever they please, and they hope that nobody will retaliate against them. That is the way Iran has always been. If you remember back to the time in the 1970s, I believe it was 1975, when Jimmy Carter went over and led a group of military members to Iran to try to release our hostages, what happened? What happened? It didn't work. It failed. It failed. Some of our own military was killed. Now these were elite forces in our military. We did not get our hostages back from Iran until President Reagan took over. And right before he was sworn in, Iran then released the hostages in 1981. So from 1975 to 1981, Iran kept 75 U.S. hostages from our embassy. The Islamic Revolutionary Guard kidnapped our 75 hostages out of the U.S. embassy. This is the kind of people that the Iranian military is. They want to do their own business their way. But heaven forbid we have a president that will stand up and defend ourselves, then all of a sudden the, U the Iranians go, oh my gosh, we better be good or we're going to suffer. Now, everything that's been going on has emboldened Iran because Iran thinks that they are strong. Iran wants everybody to realize they have everything in the bag. They don't. They don't. I believe in my own mind and heart that Iran knows what they've done. And they know that they've bitten the bear in the butt. And that bear is going to attack and retaliate. So far, there's been no reaction or response to the Iranian proposal that they gave them. Okay? But, again, Israel told Iran if they launched an attack from their soil, Israel would respond to, their, to the Iranian belligerent rhetoric and it would be over it would be over. The Israeli and American troops that have been conducting the Iron Dome air defense in northern Israel have been strong. And they have, they have repelled 90% of all the missiles coming from Iran. It's not just the drones. It's been an attack by long-range missiles now. Intercontinental ballistic missiles. Okay? As Mr. Gallant from Israel said, in this war we are being attacked from more than one front. From different directions. Any enemy that tries to attack us will first of all be met with a strong defense. The strong defense. Then look out. 
then look out. And that's what they've been putting up. A very strong defense. How to react very quickly with decisive offensive action against the territory of whoever attacks our territory, no matter where it is in the entire Middle East. Unquote. Okay? That's what's happened. Danny Huddleston is also talking about the 26 barges that broke loose along the Ohio River. I'm very much aware of what happened. Law enforcement and military National Guard forces have been dispatched to that area. They are going to try to protect any bridges downstream on the Ohio River. Some of those bridges or barges have bumped into them other barges in the river. And some of those barges have created a roadblock in the river. Okay? I take the same stance as many others have already today about the barge barges breaking loose. It's one more reason. One more thing that has happened to our country. The attack on our bridges has been huge. I don't believe they just happen. I don't believe anything just happens. Everything happens for a reason. The bridge that went down in Baltimore has already affected the United States economy to the tune of billions of dollars. And it's not over. The river over in Baltimore has not been cleared. Baltimore has already set up two other areas where ships can get through, but only small ships, like car carriers and such. One area of that river where the Francis Scott Key Bridge was is only 13 feet deep. The other one, I believe, is 35 feet deep, if I'm not mistaken. I have that information in my records. This time, it was on the Ohio River. I don't believe it's over. Diane Kelman says they wouldn't do this to Trump. Oh, I know that. Absolutely, they would not. The people that are doing this know darn well that basement Joey, yes, Joe Biden that spends his time in the basement, literally out of the public eye, not being seen by anyone, doesn't have any clue. Yes, we're being told that he receives daily briefings on the situation in Israel and other things that are going on around the world. I get that. He supposedly is the President of the United States. But I also believe he, he is weak as anything. I don't believe he's of sound mind. The people that are really in control are behind the scenes. The Biden advisors, those are the real people that are controlling the purse strings and what's going on in Washington. Okay? Tim Gibson says, where on the Ohio River? Yes. Along the Ohio River. Okay? Joseph Mengele says he can't out of respect, not, not tolerate anti-Semitism. We are not talking about anti-Semitism. That has nothing to do with this. We are not talking about anti-Semitism, we're not talking about Islamophobia, and we're not talking about racism. So get that out of your mind. That has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Joseph, get that out of your mind. This has nothing to do with that.
I don't put up with anti-Semitism. I do not put up with racism. I want to make that point perfectly clear. And I'm not racist, and I'm not an anti-Semite either. But people have to be taken literally for who they are and what they say. Okay? Hurricane Heather says Biden is not our legally elected president. I believe that too. But right now, his administration is in charge. Okay? And Charlene Savant says President Trump receives briefings as well. The CIC. Absolutely he does. As a former president, he receives the same briefings that Biden supposedly is getting. Okay? And not just that. Now he's on the, the ticket to run for president. And you darn well better believe anyone that is running for president receives the briefings as well. I know that to be a fact as well. Lori says south of Pittsburgh so far no bridge damage found. So far. We've been lucky. Yes, the barges have jammed up against the dam. And there's been damage at the dam. Is this possibly part of the reason that those barges were released? Barges just don't break apart. Barges don't get off of, of piers. They don't. They are securely attached. Now, I know a warship in San Diego where we had a tropical storm move through San Diego. And that wind of that storm up above 60 miles an hour forced a ship to be moved off of a pier. The force of that wind pushing on that ship snapped the concrete uh, moorings on that pier and forced that ship across the harbor there and rammed it into another ship. How do I know that? Because I conducted the investigation. I know all about wind. I know about the water movement with the barges. Yes, there has been increased rainfall in Ohio and all over the region. Wisconsin, Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and points to the northeast. They have all been inundated with snow and heavy rain. That's one of the reasons the Ohio River has swollen. Yes, there's increased water there, but something else happened. Something else happened there. Okay? Sally Bob Ross is true, and in a bit motivation is a strong, huge factor when it comes to seeing people for who they are. Absolutely, that, that's true. The doctor says he is from Puxatawney, Pennsylvania. That's cool. That's cool. Do any of you have any more questions about this? Anyone else have any questions? I'm happy to take any questions that anybody might have. I've been conducting my research. I've been looking all over every kind of media that I can find. I have sources that have been giving me information all day long, and I have compiled that for all of you. Diane Kelman says it's been raining for a couple weeks. Yes, it has. That storm came out of the Pacific Northwest and literally was pushed across the United States. Okay? By the way, there's also been weather engineering going on. And it's been going on for years now. Okay? 
Rob52, my dear friend from Arizona, is here with us. I'm a little surprised because he has his dear family there with him in Arizona now. I appreciate you being here, Rob. I really do. I love you. Captain Apana is asking, when will it stop? Nobody knows. We don't have any idea when this will be all shut down, if ever. What you need to know, Iran has been at the United States for years, for over a half century. They've been taunting the United States, attacking our own embassy in 1975, holding our embassy personnel hostage for six years until the United States came up with a president that would stand up to Iran. And all of a sudden, they realized that President Reagan was going to tolerate Iranian shenanigans. And all of a sudden, Iran released our hostages. This has going on, been going on for a long, long time. What is going on in Israel and Gaza has been going on for a long, long time. It's been going on in Lebanon as well. I had a dear friend who was a Marine, and he was stationed in Lebanon. And Iranian people and Hezbollah attacked the Marines there. I don't remember how many Marines were killed, but my friend was severely injured. So I'm very much aware of what Iran and the Hezbollah and Hamas terrorists have been doing. Again, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard has been regarded by the United States as a terrorist organization, along with Hezbollah and Hamas, who are backed by Iran, as well as the Houthi terrorists in Yemen. This has been going on for a very long time. It's not over. It's not over by a long shot, as I like to say. Okay? It's really not over at all. Okay? I've been watching what's been going on since now. Since last year. I do not expect it to be over for a long time. Iran has been wanting this to happen. They've been working over in Syria. They've been working over in Yemen. They have been working over in the Gaza Strip. They've been working over in Lebanon as well. This is not over. They've been working against people or with Iranian-backed people in Iraq. Our own soldiers at our bases in Iraq have been attacked. They've been attacked by Iranian-made missiles, drone attacks. Iran has been stabbing the bear, poking the bear. It's all poking the bear. The damage has been done. It remains to be seen what's going to happen now. It remains to be seen what's going to happen now. Rob 52 says President Reagan was the best president we ever had. President Reagan and President Trump. Two of the best presidents country's ever seen. Any other questions? Now, I'm not going to keep you for very long. I've already been here probably longer than I wanted to stay. However, I'm willing to continue to answer questions from you. I still got a presentation about preparedness that I want to give you. We need to give this information out to everybody. Do you guys want me to come back tomorrow evening and talk about emergency preparedness? Because I will do that. I will come back tomorrow evening 
and give you more information on what's going on and also give you information about preparedness. I've got a presentation for you. Jeannie Shannon says the Eisenhower. Yes, the USS Eisenhower is there with, it's not just the Eisenhower guys. It's a complete fleet of ships that go everywhere where the Eisenhower goes, including destroyers and troop ships. Okay? So there's all that flotilla there besides the other anti-ballistic missile destroyers that are also in the air or in the area and not just that more ships are en route Captain Apana is asking will other Muslim countries get involved? Probably probably because Iran has planned for that Iran has been planning for this for a very long time Iran and the other Muslim nations in the region would like Israel to just go away. And they've been preparing for this for a very long time. And they believe that this is what's going to happen. Okay? Now, Hurricane Heather is also here in the chat, says, we need to get folks prepared for the severe weather Monday and Tuesday. Oh, yeah. We are going to have more severe weather coming into the West Coast, and then it's going to go across the country, literally. Okay? Jan Shannon says, great stream tonight, Ron. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Scott Kitchell saying, sounds like biblical truth. Yes, it is. Okay? It is biblical truth. We've been seeing this coming for a long time. It's biblical. We know it's been happening. Catherine Sigerson says, bro, bro Ron, Brother Ron. Whoever's called me bro, I believe you meant Brother Ron. Okay? I am your brother. I'm not a bro. Okay? Any other questions? Who's Daffy Duck? <laughs> Well, here's Rass's Daffy Duck. Oh, Daffy Duck at the helm, helm, yeah, in Washington. Yeah, this is it. it what's happened during the past 48 to 72 hours is insane. It really should not have happened. The plain and simple should never have happened. Now, I will continue to put information together. That's not going away. Tomorrow about 12 noon Eastern Time, I will be coming back on the air with a program of scripture study. A Sunday school class called Come Follow Me, the Savior Said. Every Sunday at about 12 noon Eastern Time, we come on the air and we conduct Sunday school for everyone. You all are invited back tomorrow morning at 12 noon Eastern Time for our Sunday class called Come Follow Me, the Savior Said. I've been teaching Sunday school for a lot of years. A ton of years. More years than I want to even think about. I love the Lord. I appreciate the scriptures more than anything. And I feel that everyone should be with us. Okay? 
I feel everyone should be with us. And I will do my best to deliver a lesson for each and every one of you that you want and deserve. I hope you're here with us. I hope you are here with us. Tomorrow evening, I will probably be back to talk about emergency preparedness and give you any updates that is going on. I don't like paying attention to the mainstream media because many times the mainstream media wants nothing but trouble. I don't respect the mainstream media. I, I don't. I don't. I have nothing good to say about the mainstream media. Okay? I don't watch the news on television unless it's local news. Sometimes I tune into the local news. That's about all. Okay? That's about it. Okay? I love each and every one of you. That's the reason I came on the air tonight. I just want to make sure that everyone is updated about what's going on. I don't respect the mystery media. I have nothing good to say about them. They not do the job. They honestly, to goodness, can't do the job. Folks, I will let you go now. May God bless you. May God be with you. This day and always. May God be with you and bless you. God be with you until we meet again. We will see you tomorrow evening. Tomorrow afternoon, I should say. 12 noon Eastern Time. For come follow me, the Savior said. Good night, everybody. Much love.